In this video, we're going to continue talking about Lewis structures, and we're going to focus on the idea of resonance. First, we're going to do another regular example. No resonance here. Just we're continuing what we learned in the last video. We're going to draw the Lewis structure for C2H4, which is ethane. No, it's not ethane. It's ethene. Anyway, um, you guys haven't learned how to name organic molecules yet. We have two carbons, four hydrogens. Carbon is our least electronegative, and there are two of them. So we're going to put two carbons in the middle. Connect them with the bond, and we're going to put the four hydrogens around them. So see, in this case, with two carbons, we're not putting one carbon in the middle and putting everything around it. That wouldn't work here. When you have two carbons, when you have more than one carbon, you're going to have an organic molecule, and the carbons will be bonded to each other and then bonded to other things. So there will occasionally be times where you have two middle atoms, um, and you'll figure it out because we could not put everything, we could not put a carbon and a hydrogen and a hydrogen around this. Okay, now we'll count up our electrons. Actually, I did that. I did this backwards, but I'm going to count up our electrons. Two carbons, two, each carbon has four. Two times four would give us eight valence electrons. Four hydrogens gives us four. So unless I'm making a mistake, we have a total of 12 valence electrons here. And I'm going to see how many we distributed. Two, oops, I forgot to draw this one. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We've distributed ten so far, leaving us with two. Let's see what we have. Hydrogen already is happy. We can't put any more electrons around these outer atoms because they have two, and hydrogen can only handle two. Each carbon, however, looks like it only has six. This carbon has two, two, and two, giving it six. This carbon has two, two, and two, giving it six. I'm going to take this extra two electrons, distribute it, put it a double bond in between these two carbons. Now each carbon here looks like it has eight. And so we're done. In this example, we're drawing the, ion, the Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion. This is NO plus. I don't know what the name of that is, but either way. So we're going to count up our electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Oxygen has six, which would give us 11. But this polyatomic ion has a positive charge, meaning that it's lost one electron. So I have to take one away before I even start. So this ion, because it has a positive charge, only has 10 valence electrons distributed around it. Okay, having figured that out, now we're going to put, well, there's no middle here. We have one and one, so we're going to draw an N, and we're going to draw an O, connect them by a bond. Okay, that takes away two electrons, leaving us with eight. We're going to distribute these eight around oxygen and nitrogen. Let's see how far we get. I could put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. So that makes me, if I, I distributed eight, so I have no more electrons, but the way it looks now, oopsies, I have one, two, three, four around nitrogen, which is not good. Oxygen is happy, it has eight. But oxygen's gonna have to share because nitrogen's not stable. So we're gonna move these two electrons here to make a double bond. That'll give us one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're gonna move these here to give us a triple bond. Let's rewrite it. We have nitrogen, we have oxygen, we now have three bonds in here, and we still have a lone pair here and a lone pair here. So now if we look at it, nitrogen is sharing these six electrons and it has two, so it looks like it has eight. Oxygen sharing these six electrons and it has two, so it looks like it has eight. So both atoms are stable. So remember, when you're drawing the Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion, you have to take into account that the ion has lost or gained an electron. We're going to draw the Lewis structure for the bromate ion. Bromate is not one that I made you memorize. I lo I'm looking it up right now. You could look it up in your polyatomic ion sheet. It is BrO3 minus. Okay, so bromine is a halogen, so it's going to have seven valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and there are three oxygens, so three times six gives us 18, which gives us a total of 25. However, oopsies, I have an extra electron that I have to add. So I have to add one more to this group of electrons, 
giving me a total of 26 electrons to distribute. Now, I'm going to look and find my, well, there's no, find my least electronegative atom, although it's a little trickier here. Bromine is a halogen, but bromine is three steps down from, or two steps down from fluorine. So electronegativity decreases as we go down the table. So bromine is going to be our least electronegative. And we're going to put the oxygens, three oxygens around it, and we'll connect each oxygen with the bond. Again, I said the way these are written, usually the least electronegative is written first. So that's a tip that you could check, and then you can double check just to make sure it's correct. So we've used three bonds, two, four, six. I'm going to subtract six electrons, which leaves me with 20. Now I'm going to distribute the, these 20 electrons. So let's see how far I get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Distributed 18 around the outer atoms. We can move two. So now my outer atoms, oxygen looks like it has eight. This oxygen looks like it has eight. This oxygen looks like it has eight. So that's great. Bromine looks like it has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to take these two electrons and give them to bromine as a lone pair. Now we've distributed all our electrons, and bromine also looks like it has six. So this is done. Everybody looks like it has, I mean, bromine also looks like it has eight, it's sharing six and has two of its own. When you draw the Lewis structure for an ion, you should make it clear that it's an ion. I didn't do this on the NO plus, but you have, you put brackets around it and put its charge outside the bracket, so this would be a minus. That's important so that people know you didn't accidentally give it an extra electron. I'm going to let you do this one on your own. We'll check it in class. This is the Lewis structure for the chloride ion. I've given you the chloride ion formula here. This one you can also do on your own. You should know phosphate, but I'll tell you it's PO4 with a minus 3 charge. We'll check it in class. Okay, now we're going to talk about something called resonance. Resonance is when you can have two or more representations of a Lewis structure for a particular molecule. And the actual structure is a, an average of these, of these structures. So we're going to look at ox ozone as an example. Ozone is O3. Ozone has two possible structures. We could have this one, or we could have this one. Now, something we have not talked about, but a double bond, which is what this is, and this is, a double bond will be shorter than a single bond because you have more attraction. There's more electrons in there that can be attracted to the protons, so it's going, there's more energy in a double bond, so there's more force, so it's going to hold the atoms together more closely. So if either one of these was correct, it, we would be able to tell from experimental data because we have ways of measuring bond length. So if either one of these were correct all by itself, then one bond would show up as being slightly shorter than the other. But that's not the case. In, uh, what we observe experimentally is that both bonds are of equal length. So that means that we can't have one that is a double bond because if that were the case, this one would be shorter. And we don't see that when we experimentally. We see they're both the same length. So the way we explain that, and again, a mo mo when we talk about bonding, we're trying to explain what we see. We use the idea of resonance. And you can think an analogy for this would be color. Green is a synthesis of blue and yellow. Green is not part blue and part yellow, right? It doesn't, it doesn't alternate. It's not sometimes blue and sometimes yellow. It's always green. And it's an average or a mixture of these two colors. That's what resonance means. Resonance is an average of two different structures. So the real structure for ozone is somewhere in between this and this. This extra double bond, it kind of it kind of shares its time between here and here, between one side and the other, but it's not correct to say sometimes it's here and sometimes it's here. That would be like saying green is sometimes blue and sometimes yellow. And we would be able to see if it was sometimes here and sometimes here, then there would always be one bond that was shorter, and that's not the case. The bonds are the same size. 
So the real structure is an average of this structure, making it slightly, it's like everything, each of these two bonds is a, not a single bond and not a double bond, but kind of a one and a half bond. That's what resonance means. We're averaging two structures. And that essentially is what this text is saying. The electrons, and this is looking at a different double bond. This is, what is this compound? This HCO2 minus is a formate ion. Um, that's neither here nor there. So the electrons in this second bond, we say they are delocalized. They're not sitting here. They're not sitting here. They're kind of, they move around. Okay, so they're kind of in both places. If you go on to study organic chemistry, you'll find that resonance is particularly important. This is the compound benzene, C6H6. It has two resonance structures, and the way that's usually depicted, sometimes it's depicted like this with the ring, with the lines in different, and sometimes they show the resonance by a circle. So if you study organic chemistry, you'll see that the circle means double bonds that are resonating. This is, go back, oh. Okay, now we're going to draw Lewis structure, to one or more structures, it's going to be more, for the nitrate anion. So let's say nitrate is NO3 minus 1. Our least electro, uh, we have five electrons for nitrogen. We have three oxygens, each one has six. Three times six is 18. We have to add an extra electron because of this negative charge. That's one extra. I'm going to add up my total electrons. I get 24, right? So I have 24 electrons. My least electronegative atom is nitrogen because ni electronegativity increases as you go across. I'm going to put my three oxygens around nitrogen, connect them each with a bond. That takes away six electrons, so I have 18 left. I need to, to leave more room here, so let's see what happens. Um, now I'm going to distribute these 18 electrons, so let's do that. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I just put 12 electrons in, okay, leaving me with 6. If you look at this, you'll see now each electron only has 6 electrons. So, I, and I have 6 more to distribute. If I distribute these 6, one, two, three, four, five, six. Each oxygen will be happy, but the nitrogen will only have six. So I can't just give these six electrons to the oxygens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of them a double bond, and then I'm going to put the other two electrons, two here and two here. Now if we look, this one looks like it has eight, this one looks like it has eight, this one looks like it has eight, and nitrogen looks like it has eight. However, why does the double bond have to be on this oxygen? Why can't it be on the middle oxygen? Well, it can. So we're going to draw a resonance structure for that. I'm going to put N, O, O, O. I'm going to put my double bond here, and I'll put one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to draw these pairs as lines now. One, two, three, and this one would have two. Now, but why can't the, the, the double bond be on this one? Well, it can. So let's draw that structure. It would be an N, three O's. In that case, we'll put the double bond here. And we'll draw our one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So we have three structures for the nitrate anion. We're going to start the next video.